Welcome to the 2020 Summit on What Next for Wireless Infrastructure, hosted by the University of Surrey 5G Innovation Centre in association with Telecom TV and supported by Etsy. I'm Guy Daniels and over the next two days I'll be your online MC and session moderator. Now we have four sessions of presentations across two days, including a live Q&A panel discussion at the close of each day. We really want to hear from you, so please submit your questions for our guests. There's a form here on the website for you to use. I'm joined now by our host, Professor Rahim Tafazoli, who is head of the ICS and 5G IC at the University of Surrey, and by our chair for day one, Adrian Scrace, Chief Technology Officer at Etsy. Rahim, you've put together our programme and are hosting this event, but why now? With 5G only just beginning to enter commercial service, why is it now time to look ahead towards what will ultimately be the sixth generation of wireless? Thank you, Guy, and it's important question you ask. It's for two main reasons. I've been to many meetings, conferences, uh, and uh, different organizations all over the world. I realize that uh, many people, especially uh, people from vertical industry, uh, there is a lack of understanding on what 5G is capable of. So the first day is for that purpose, to um, educate ourselves, what are the 5G capabilities are and how it is evolving over time. Looking at the UK national strategy for development and deployment on 5G and 5G services. And the second main reason is once we establish the capability of 5G and the way it is, will be evolving, uh, we'll discuss about what should be next, what should be, uh, what we could be at essentially the next generation of the wireless technology. And that is important because the time between generations, or the systems seems to be shrinking from 12 year to 10 year to eight years. So from the research community point of view, we need to have a common vision of uh, which direction we should be focusing our research and development and innovation and mobilize the world, academia and industry in the same direction. And that is the purpose of the second day. Thank you, Rahim. And Adrian, as chair of day one, what can we expect to learn? What are we covering today? Well, thank you, Guy. The, the purpose of this first day is really to understand where the five journey will be taking us in the, the next five years. If we look where we are right now, uh, we have roughly 100 5G commercial networks that have been deployed, but these are really uh, mobile broadband based. So in terms of the full potential of 5G, uh, we're really only in an infant stage. Now to complete that journey, we will see uh, movements into industry sectors, uh, which will leverage the ultra reliable low latency communications and massive machine type communications. The expansion from terrestrial into non-terrestrial technologies, adding non-public network deployments, uh, leveraging standalone use of unlicensed spectrum and the use of time-sensitive networks. These are just examples of work that 3GPP is undertaking that will help us to achieve that vision. Uh, in addition, we have very important government strategies, uh, strategies to digitize industry by the use of 5G technologies. And we will hear more about that, at least from a UK perspective today. We have senior representatives from operators and from vendors who will be sharing with us their vision of products and services that, that they hope to deploy in the next five years. And by the end of today, then, we should have a much better vision of the drivers for 5G evolution and be able to visualize where we're likely to be in five years. 
Thank you, Adrian. It's a, it's a great selection of presentations. Very much looking forward to those. Raheem, the 5GIC is a world-class research establishment that has been instrumental in improving 5G technologies. So how are you now extending this to support the future of wireless infrastructure? Well, our mission, as always and uh, been stated, is what is the art of possibility? And that's why we work very closely with all major players from industry, telecom as well as non-telecom industry. And uh, as what we did, the same thing as we did in 2013, we were the world's first dedicated center on 5G innovation. And for the last seven years, we have uh, achieved many different technologies and demonstrated many technologies um, and, and as Adrian mentioned, recently we tested 5G over geostationary satellite as well as non-geostationary satellite to extend 5G into a space. Uh, I, will, I will obviously talk about the major achievements in the last seven years that we uh, carried out in collaboration with our major uh, uh, industry partners. and. We plan to carry on our mission uh, to be independent research organization and explore the boundaries of the technology and share that information with our industry partners. And then they can take it forward towards a standardization in, to in form of potential products for the benefit of their own uh, industry and company. Uh, we, for the last, I would say, nine to 12 months, we've been discussing with our uh, founding members and the strategy advisory board members, which representative of our um, industry partners, as well as with Etsy, with Adrian and, and different uh, colleagues from Etsy, what should be next? 5G is a very capable system. Uh, as Adrian mentioned, we are already witnessing mobile broadband, but the major game changer and transformative aspect of 5G is yet to come within the next five years. So what we are gonna do after five years, what sort of technology we have to do, we need to carry on the research. And based on this discussion, tomorrow I will present the vision as well as the white paper on the vision. We are going to publish that one and announce that one uh, officially. And in that vision, the same thing as we did with 5G, over the time we are translating that vision into research topics and trying to uh, innovate and come up with the new advanced technologies over the time. Thank you, Raheem. And I very much look forward to hearing more about the, the new vision and the white paper tomorrow. For now, Adrian, Etsy is supporting this event. And obviously, Etsy has been at the center of telecom specifications, and especially through the 3GPP, instrumental in driving 5G standards. So how closely are you working with industry on the development of future wireless infrastructure? I mean, the big question here, really, uh, Guy, is once the research and development phase is finished, what happens with those results? So industry invests a lot of time and effort working with academia and universities to, uh, to, to undertake this research and development. And then so what? At the end of that, we have good results, which are probably not mature enough for standardization, but they're perfectly mature for pre-standardization. So what Etsy aspires to do here really is provide a, a bridge to bridge the gap between research and development and standardization, to provide a landing pad so that those result, results can be further worked, further matured, so that at some future point, they are then fit and, and proper to be included in 6G standards. Thank you, Adrian. And we'll be speaking again later in the day during the live Q&A session. A reminder that we want to hear from you. So please use the website submission form and send in your questions. The session will start at 4 p.m. UK time today. 
Right, Adrian, could you please do the honours and introduce our first presentation? Indeed, Guy, and ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure now to introduce Professor Max Liu, who is the President and Vice-Chancellor at the University of Surrey. 